walk us through the math a little bit, because the documentary, there's a lot of numbers in there. I mean, you have real numbers for mules. So I guess I'll start with that is what is a mule in your nomenclature? And from there, just kind of walk us through the mules to the ballot harvesting to the votes that the film claims should have gone the other direction if it were valid. Right. So a mule is, I mean, the term is kind of lifted from drug trafficking or sex trafficking, except here we're talking about ballot trafficking. A mule is a paid operative that is hired, in our case, by a left-wing organization uh, to deliver fraudulent and illegal votes to a mail-in dropbox. Uh, so that's what a mule is. The mule is the middleman. The mule doesn't come up with ballots. The mule goes to a left-wing organization, is handed a satchel or a backpack full of ballots, and then they go kind of on a route from one drop box to another, to another, to another. And the onus for our side it is one thing to call it like we see it, to call out the nonsense, to call this out. It is another to soberly recognize where we are in what appears to be a falling, decadent, late stage republic and to act accordingly. To use a phrase that has become a bit of a late motif on this podcast, to know what time it is and to command our side's battle stations accordingly to go to battle in this roiling cold civil war against our domestic foes that the Biden regime has just dramatically escalated. Who am I to judge? Well, if a man wants to pretend he's a woman, as long as he doesn't scare the horses in the street, that's none of my business. And I think what the new conservatives who are really just the old conservatives <laughs> are saying is, no, I actually can tell the difference between a man and a woman. <laughs> I actually can tell men that they shouldn't mutilate themselves to try to look more like women. I actually can. I'm a taxpayer. I have my kids. I have some right to raise my own children. I, I can kick books out of the curriculum. Do you buy that this is actually about the Presidential Records Act or, or is that just a total fig leaf, you think? Well, I do think that that's the imprimatur, right? And I think that you've got Garland in there who, remember, he's got a huge bone to pick, not necessarily directly with President Trump, but just Republicans in general, because he views Republicans and McConnell as denying him his his right to a seat on the Supreme Court. Remember, that was his seat. He was supposed to be granted it. And then suddenly, because of the machinations of the Senate, was not able to achieve it. So now that he's attorney general, and I don't have any specific uh, reporting on this, but I like to think that it's sort of his his he's you know, he's getting revenge. Right. He's on a revenge streak against anyone associated with the Republican Party. Certainly the president that nominated the you know, uh, I believe it was Gorsuch um, nominated the person to the spot that was supposed to be his. But but this is the most terrifying thing is what you just said, because it it is vindictive. It clearly is revenge. I mean, this clearly is the weaponization of the national law enforcement apparatus, the same law enforcement apparatus that lied to get the Pfizer surveillance on Carter Page. I mean, you know, you and I know the whole story by now inside and out. Do not buy the crap if you are in Arizona and listening to this podcast. Go ahead and vote for Blake Masters. The guy will be a fantastic member of the U.S. Senate caucus. 